Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and yes, we're back talking about YSNet in Shenmue 3 yet again, because of course we are. For those of you unfamiliar of where we're at with YSNet up until this point, the brief overview is that the developers and the publisher, Deep Silver, who are also the publishers for Metro Exodus, took the crowdfunded game that raised over $6 million from nearly 70,000 backers and made it a paid timed distribution exclusive through the Epic storefront. Now, the resulting backlash was about as obvious and transparent as Electronic Arts attempting to claim loot boxes, or as they like to call them, surprise mechanics, are completely ethical and are great fun as a business model. Also, ignoring the backlash, YSNet and Deep Silver decided to refuse refunds to the Kickstarter backers that they had just donkey-kicked squarely in the teeth, which further enraged the recently donkey-kicked Kickstarter backers. The Tim Sweeney, in an even more obvious, big shall we say, well-endowed monetary move PR stunt, decided that Epic Games would foot the bill for any backers that wanted a refund after YS Nets and Deep Silver gave them the middle finger. From there, all was about as to be expected. With YS Nets and Deep Silver counting their ill-gotten gains garnered off of the backs of the people that they had just screwed over. However, now we have YS Net thumbing their noses at the backers yet again, which is, obviously, the purpose of this video, because I did want to talk about both reasonable and unreasonable expectations and the part of perception that can come into play in situations like these. As always, links to any sources used will be down in the description below. Now, I was sent to WCC cftech.com for this article written by Chris Ray that was a very opinionated piece titled Shenmue 3 Backers Will Not Get Pre-Order Content, Can Pay For It, in which they showcase this response by Antonio Miranda to a recent Kickstarter update in which it reads, I just got a reply from YSNet regarding season pass and trial version. TLDR backers won't get content and pre-orders slash deluxe edition including the season pass. Dear Antonio, we apologize for the long delay in responding. Your feedback is appreciated and we will look into having your noted points in future updates. Standard and deluxe versions released through retail sales are not affiliated with the crowdfunding campaign, so will not be included with backer pledges. However, they will be available for sale separately. Kickstarter backers will receive the Kickstarter version. Slacker backers will receive the Slacker backer version. Both have unique content respective to their versions not available in the retail versions. A season pass is not included. A trial version release date info has yet to be confirmed and will be announced in the updates when details are available. You will receive your trial version, but we must ask for your patience for a little longer. There will be more information following in the days ahead concerning updates. Sincerely, the Shinmu 3 team. And as this is a point of contention for some Kickstarter backers, the pre-order bonuses being listed are as follows. A Blazing Kick Advanced Technique Scroll, so basically a special move, a Cosmetic Kenpogi Training Outfit, and a Peking Power Starter Pack, which one could probably safely assume would consist of in-game items, XP boosts, and the like. Uh, the rest of the pre-order bonuses are either PlayStation-specific or are physical goods, such as the GameStop's 2-inch Dragon and Phoenix Mirror Medallion. And so those are the basic facts surrounding this, and I find myself both agreeing with YSNet in some aspects of this and wholeheartedly disagreeing with them in others. You see, to my mind, obviously, any physical goods outside of those specified by your Kickstarter backer tier should have to be purchased separately. I think that should be fairly self-evident and obvious. Physical goods are not infinitely replicatable at no additional cost like in-game cosmetics or boosters, and as such, if your backer tier didn't cover them, then, well, you should have to pay for them. I don't think that's a wholly controversial stance to take. In fact, I think that should be plainly self-evident. The same thing, I think, for season passes. If your Kickstarter tier did not specify a season pass or DLC, then that is also something that should have to be paid for separately, as it is additional content that is being developed outside of the crowdfunded base game. I again also think it only reasonable that when it comes to DLC content, if you didn't back it, then you probably shouldn't get it for free. Now, when it comes to the pre-order content, that is where I think I'm going to have to side with Antonio here. Not for the reasons that any backer is necessarily owed any content outside of what was specified within their backer tier, but more on the basis of public relations. You see, this could have been a very easy no-brainer for YSNet and Deep Silver in relation to the pre-order content. They severely thumbed their noses at their backers, triple-dipping with the Epic Paid exclusive, and then flat-out ignored the outrage they themselves caused. They ignored the people that, were it not 
not for them, there would not have even been the Shinmu 3 to get Deep Silver as a publisher. There would have been no game to get paid for to make an Epic paid exclusive. Without those Kickstarter backers throwing in $6 million, there would have been nothing. And why SNET and Deep Silver can't even be bothered to throw some infinitely replicatable in-game items they are already created anyways in favor of attempting to force backers into paying for them? Now, I've seen levels of cynical greed to that degree before, but usually coming from a company like Electronic Arts, Activision Blizzard, or Bethesda, it should have been a simple conversation to have. Hey, we really ruffled some feathers by doing this, so how about we let our Kickstarter backers have this stuff that literally costs us nothing except the time it takes to generate the necessary activation codes? It would have made them happier, it would have basically cost nothing, or at least inconsequential amounts of effort when faced with a positive PR it would have generated for a change, and this would have been a complete non-issue. But no, YSNet had to take the greedy route. You know, I feel bad for the people that kickstarted Shenmue 3. I really do, and I wish I could help them out. I'd love to talk to someone at YSNet if they would even be willing to listen, so if anyone happens to have any contact info for them, I'd love to have it. I mean, outside of their emails they have listed on their website. I've already emailed them there. Now, I have to admit, I've grown so disenfranchised with even the idea of Shenmue 3 that I doubt I'll ever buy it. I just don't want to support a company that acts so completely engrossed by greed. But if I'm able to get a response from them, I would love to be able to try and convince them to provide their Kickstarter backers with those digital, infinitely replicatable goods due to the PR backlash they've already caused numerous times. I think it would be a good PR move for them. It would basically cost them nothing, and it would make their Kickstarter backers just a little bit happier. I think that would be an all-around win for everyone, and so that's what I'm going to try and do. I'll let everyone know if anything comes of it. I don't have high hopes for it, though. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. And I'll see you next time.